Hello, in this video we're going to show you how to rebuild an autoprop H5 propeller. To get the propeller off the boat and to work on it in the workshop, which is the preferred way of doing it, um, the first thing you're going to need to do is take the zinc off. Now this is part of the yearly service, it's very straightforward. You take the little plastic screws or what's left of them and take what's left of your zinc off and set that to one side. Uh, once you've got the zinc off, you're going to have access to the uh, propeller nut. But before you take the propeller nut off, there is a set screw on the side. Now a lot of people do forget this. You need to back off this little set screw, which nips the nut up and stops it from coming off when you're in underwear. Back this one off, wind the nut off, and uh, you can see this one's just, this is just uh, zinc, powdered zinc from um, the, the anode. Once you've got that off, the final part before you take the propeller off is there's a prop pulling tool. Now you can actually make one, it's a metal plate that sits on the back of the prop, three holes in, and a central um, bolt. You wind it on, so you're pulling the um, prop off from this end of the shaft. Be very, very careful when you're in the yard if you're going to use prop pullers to pull it around from the back. Um, the blades, obviously, on a on a uh, auto prop, need to move and swing freely. And if you have any load on the blades, you can actually damage the mechanism that, that allows them to feather. Um, so be very careful when you do that. Once you have your propeller off, you need to find a nice, good, stable work surface. Um, obviously, we're set up in the studio here, but uh, a good, sturdy bench. Uh, you're going to need some tools, um, some probably pistol crips to, to hold the blades down. And the hardest parts, or some of the hardest parts, are getting the um, the blade caps off and then the, the, uh, the tab screw underneath that holds everything together. So you're going to need a little bit of force. Um, hammers, uh, we use tend to use longer bars to extend the length of the um, tools that they provide. So that's the next step, is to get it a good, nice working bench and get yourself all set up with the right tools. Um, you can actually buy these from Brunton's, obviously the peg spanner that does the pegs, and um, the, uh, the tab screw spanner, and then the lock nut spanner. So there's three tools that you do need. Um, over the years, you know, this is, uh, if you can see this one on camera, um, I've actually made these myself. This is just a bit of stainless with some cap head bolts. We grind it down the grinding wheel. Um, uh, this one here, again, just a bit of, st bit of, bit of steel bar from Home Depot, uh, a couple of bolts in, and again on the grinding wheel, we just grind them down. Just measure the holes, very, very straightforward. Um, this one here, um, as you can see, this one is actually this version here. This is for a, a H, um, is it the same one? Yes, it is, H5. So I had this one in early, I didn't have the tool, um, it was on back order. Um, same idea. So you can actually make them, don't be afraid to, to have a go with that. Um, they are, if, all they are, in effect, is peg spanners, so you just give it a go. Okay, you got the right tools, let's move on. Now, the first thing to do to actually start taking the propeller apart more than you would on your early service is to take off the blade caps. Now, these are an important part of the propeller. They keep everything lubricated and all the grease inside so it doesn't wash out. Um, earlier versions of auto props used um, um, seawater to lubricate, but now everything's in, in, encapsulated in a, a lithium grease kind of stuff you use in boat trailers. Now these have four holes on, and the spanner that you can get from the website looks like this. Again, peg spanner, two holes in, and all you're going to do is match up the two holes and just wind it off. Now, <laughs> clearly I, I have had uh, a lot of experience in winding these off and I've, I've uh, made this easy for camera. Um, what I do find, and what I will say, is that you can either use a hammer on this one to, to tap, 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 or what I use is a, is a quite a large length of bar, pop it in, put it on, and then you can get a good lever arm, and, and then you're not, you're not um, losing fingers and all that sort of stuff um, in the workshop. So you need to take the three caps off, and on each of the blades as well, there's the two grease ports that are here. Um, these, these again, they're part of the kit, so you want to take those off as well. So let's, so we've got, again, this is ridiculously easy, but uh, that's for demonstration purposes only. So you get your three blade caps come off with the, uh, the peg spanner. The next thing you're going to see inside, uh, depending on the ver the version that you have, um, this is a tab screw, and it's like a daisy, a flower with fronds, and the lock nut has four grooves north, south, east, and west. And what you're going to try and do when you put it back together is pick one of those fronds and push it in one of the grooves and it locks it in place. Taps through the, the lock, lock nut. 
Um, the trick now is to either with a screwdriver, a pair of pliers, or however you want to do it, is to find the little frond, and I've just lifted it up here, and lift it out of the nut. Now this is a left hand thread, so it's going to wind off clockwise, um, and then underneath is a conventional nut holding everything together. So that's a right hand thread. So the two kind of work together and then when one's loosening and the other's loosening, they're actually tightening against each other and it holds it all together. So this is a critical part of when you put it back together, um, getting it right. But for now, all I tend to do is, is just bend them back like so. And then using a, a homemade tool, so we're going to go the opposite way to what you would normally do. So it should be tightening for a conventional thread. And we're just going to wind this one off. And there you have it. That's one of the, um, the lock nuts off. You can see it's got a tab screw because it's got little tabs and little fronds that hold it in place. These are actually handmade, so you want to keep... Don't throw those out when you throw the other parts of the bearing kit out. You want to keep all of those. Um, and then once you can see inside, we can now see the um, uh, the lock nut in place. Um, so I need to go and finish and remove all the tab screws now and get to ready to remove the lock nuts. Once the tab screws are removed, the final stage before it will all start to come apart and the blades will pop off is to remove the nut that holds the blade on. Just looking in here, you can see it. And uh, this again uh, uses a special tool. Where is it? There we go. Um, this one here is, is quite helpful because it allows you, at the end of it, you can torque it up. Um, again, I've made a couple of my own tools, same sort of thing, uh, just with the two pegs. And it's just going to um, sit in the two of the little holes and it's just going to get to locate. Just going to wind off. So we're just loosening the bolt now. And you can see that as we start to loosen it off, the blade is going to start to wobble and it's going to come away um, from its natural seat on the bearing. So it's not off. And that's what the lock nut looks like. Um, it's just a, a nut with four little grooves cut into it on each quadrant, which the tab screw sits into and locks it. Again, left hand thread, right hand thread. And there's nothing else holding the blades on now. So if we pull, just give it a little wiggle. And there we have all the blades coming apart. Now, normally I would do this in the workshop. We do it on a vise. Uh, we hold everything level. I'm just showing you just for the effect. Um, you can see all the little ball bearings are just starting to to drop out here. Um, we'll count them, make sure they're all, all there. Uh, in the rebuild kit, I think there's usually a couple extra. So we'll tell you um, the next stages. And on here, you can see the taper roller bearing. It's just dropped out there. So we've got um, two sets of taper roller bearing. We've got the ball bearings that were on the, um, the two tracks. And this here is a lip seal. And we need to replace the lip seal. So a little bit of cleaning up to do. Um, so I'm going to go ahead now, strip all the blades down and then start to clean the hub up and then we'll come back. Once you have all the blades off, uh, there's, a, there's one final or two final things that you have to do. Um, the first one is to take out the um, taper roller bearing on the inside. Uh, this one's actually loose enough to pull out. So that's the taper. We'll, we'll come back to explaining which way that goes in. Um, when we put it back together because it is quite important. The final thing you need to consider, now this here, this black around here, uh, this is the lip seal and this is what uh, again keeps all the grease in. I like to be very gentle when I take these out because um, it's nice <coughs> to be able to have them in the spares kit. They're hard to find. Um, I don't think you see this on this camera here. I'm just gently peeling it back. You can just get an edge, it doesn't damage it, and you can pull it out. Yeah, there's no damage there. Still, still got a nice um, sharp edge, so it's not worn, it's got a good spring in it as well. So these, these things are good to have on the spares kit on board if you ever come across mishaps again in the future. 
and that's one blade st stripped down. So <clears throat> I've got to take out the little screw on, on the side, but uh, really it's it's uh, ready now to get cleaned up uh, the hub. The grease. So what we're looking for here now, we need to check on the tracks here, uh, the races, um, that there's there's no marks and there's no wear patterns. Um, with the H5, it is possible that uh, this could wear. Uh, in that case, there is some remachining that can be done, but it has to go back to the UK. So just check the um, the races, make sure they're 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 smooth and clean. And if they are. Um, you can carry on and then strip the rest of the propeller down and rebuild it. If there is any marks, if you send us a photograph, we can uh, advise you whether you actually need to um, have it uh, uh, remachined um, to take the, the bearing tracks again. I'm going to go ahead now and finish off this propeller. And there you have it. Um, at the end of it, you should have your hub uh, with nice clean tracks uh, with no markings on. All your blades have the lip seals removed. Again, nice clean tracks on the inside of the blades. Uh, there should be no bearings on the inside. All the threads should be clean and clear of any Loctite or any um, uh, ablative paint that's been used on the propeller. Um, I still need to clean up the caps at the moment, but we've got the caps. We need to take out the screws, clean the grease. There's an O-ring seal in here we need to replace. We've got the tab screws. Again, these are valuable things to have in your toolbox. Got the bolts. Then I've replaced the zinc. Got the prop nut, very important. These are expensive and custom. Um, lip seals again. Keep these in your toolbox. Um, they're um, again hard to find. Um, I've got tape roller bearings to put in, and then the ball bearings. I just keep them in bags, so I know how easy it is to keep the balls. Um, and that's it. So the next stage is going to be um, putting it all back together. Um, I'm going to clean all this up now. Um, put it through on the uh, the grinding wheel, polish it. Uh, I've got all the blades marked, so I know, and the blades are actually marked, so I know which. Um, station that the blades came from and uh, we'll stick it all back together. Thanks for watching.